So, we finally got around to making part two of this tutorial. And in this video, we're going to show how to bring a background into Character Animator. Um, we're going to separate into background, a foreground, and then we're going to bring that into OBS. Um, we're also going to make part three, which is going to be how to do a more advanced setup using vMix. And we're going to add in some um, video overlays and that type of thing as well. So, first thing we need to do is in Illustrator, we have a background selected um, and created. And what we're going to do is just break this up into layers. All these are vector images, so everything's separate. Um, what I'm going to do is copy and paste these into Photoshop, just because we we work. We find the translation between Photoshop and um, Character Animator a lot smoother, so we're just going to set it up in that way. Um, you can go straight from Illustrator as well, that would be a problem. Um, and you know, you can save them, save these backgrounds and foregrounds out as Illustrator or Photoshop files so that you've got full um, editable um, go to be able to go in and change things at a later date. But we're just going to do a uh, basic and simple setup at the moment. So I'm going to select, separate the background out. So now this is the background. Put this in the foreground and this is very far in the foreground. So I'm going to copy this. Scene set up in Photoshop and I've got this at around 4K. Um, the reason that we got, we're going to save this out as a higher resolution is that later on if you want to zoom in we're not going to lose any of the resolution um, when doing so. So all I'm going to do is just basically bring these in here and layer it all up. How I want it to be. So, copy. Like I say there's different, many different ways of doing this. Um, you could do all this in Illustrator. Um, it's just uh, this is just our workflow um, of how we get it done. There you go. Just thinking about it. All right, I'm going to bring that in the front just as a to give the scene a bit of depth. So. Now what we need to do is save each layer out as a PNG file, so save as well actually before I do that what I want to do is I'm going to delete out this white area in here. So later on we can um, put some video or different images behind there. So, actually, I'm going to save these as Photoshop files. So, so I can edit that later on. So, I'll do background. Now, in our Photoshop, um, in our character animated file, we're going to double check. I'm going to keep this at um, 1080 and then I'm going to bring the, um, the elements in and scale them down. So we have file and import. And we bring these three in. And to set these up we literally just drag them onto our timeline. So we're background and back. Go to transform, scale that down to 50%. Then I'm going to bring our desk in front of the rabbit. Again, that's going to need scaling down to 50%. And then we're going to want our plant in the foreground. And we can bring that down to 50% as well. And make sure we've got it on scale and not just on all of it, not just X. And we can also move the position over on that a little bit as well. So, uh, then all we need to do is bring our rabbit down and position him to where we want him to be. So, I'm here behind the desk. So, that's the simplest way of bringing in um, a scene for your character. Um, we can do 
some things here now as well. So say if we want to add in a trigger um, so that we can flip between some images up here. Ideally, we want to be able, we're going to have to do that within the puppet itself so that when we have our trigger system set up, we don't have to switch between different elements um, to do so. So we want to build an overlay that's going to fit up there and change images in the screen. Um, this is um, a setup for character animator, so there's not going to be any video playing. Um, we'll go into that in the later video, but this will show how to do a, a pretty basic setup. So um, I'm going to quickly go through that now. So what we're going to want to do is on our character, we're going to make sure that everything will be lined up correctly. So I'm going to bring him down to 50% and what we're going to need to do is go to open him up in Photoshop. Now to be honest this is the first time we've done this because we would normally use the advanced way of setting this up so we're kind of winging it here. Uh, so what I would probably recommend doing to get it lined up the best we can is if we do a print screen print screen, is that print screen? Yeah, print screen, and if we bring that in, yeah, and we can kind of use this as a guide, line this, uh, line the character up, so we know exactly where the TV is going to need to go. I mean, this isn't going to be precise at the moment, but we'll get it near on as we can, so... Yeah, that's pretty close enough. Um, so our TV screen... It's going to be up there. Let's move down to the side of the TV screen. Um, let's make a new layer. So we've got our hair to get. So what we're going to want is a new folder up here. I'm going to call this TV Trigger. Now we're going to need some, let's just make a simple box. layer that white and we'll put some text in it and just put image one as an example and we'll change this one to image 2 and we'll do one more and change that to image 3 so now if we just merge these layers together So there we go, we've got image 1, 2 and 3. Now what we want to do is, again we're going to bring a reference over. that one up to where it needs to go and get rid of our reference image. Now if we save this actually what we'll do is we'll make them unseen for now so I'll save go back into character animator actually what we need to do 
is we're gonna have to we might have to put these outside of the puppet um, all depending on how the independent works so if we make that free actually let's just make them visible or at least one of them visible for now let's see what happens it's going to move or not. Yeah, it's going to move. Um, what we need to actually do then is bring these outside of the puppet layer. We want it behind the puppet as well, so press 4, save. That update. So now we want that independent, and we want to add trigger onto each one of them. So let's just make it one, two, and three, and then each one of them will hide the other in the group. There we go. So, what we're going to do as well is make them all latch. And we can reposition this as well a little bit better. Like I say, I'm not going to get too precise with this, just it gives a, um, just an example of how we can put in simple trigger system that's built into the character actually what we would want to do as well but let's do it properly we want to make that a swap set so we can actually create a swap set at number one default and we'll just call this ev So now if you press one, two or three, that'll change your image. So you can load them up um, for each show and have that change as you're speaking. So that's just a very simple way of setting that up. Um, also, what we can do is, um, we can now bring this whole um, image into OBS. So doing that, we, First of all, um, we've got uh, tutorials before on how to install uh, the NDI plugin, so check them out. But what you want to do is make sure that it is in the setup. So if you go Edit Preferences, Live Output, make sure you've got New Tech NDI there and selected, and Enable Berkeley Transmit. This will mean that this is now. Um, I want to make sure that's switched on. Um, that's transmitting to NDI. If we go to OBS. We just need to add a source, and we need to add an NDI source, right new, okay, and there we go. Um, so here we've got um, something that we can now broadcast straight to um, Facebook, YouTube, or Twitch, or whatever online streaming service you want to use, and as long as you've got this opened up as well. Um, while you're animating you can use your triggers to control this puppet in the show. I mean, um, 
animated and doing whatever it is he is doing. So, that is a very simple OBS um, put in a scenery to a character setup. Um, if you want to get a bit more advanced on this one, you could also add a camera to the scene. So all you've got to do is go to new scene camera. And then we can do something like create a triggerable shot. So let's just have our default. So we'll create a triggerable shot and call that default. Um, then we can have another one. So let's uh, zoom in closer and create a triggerable shot there. And then let's zoom up into the TV screen as well. So if we go back to so our control panel, we can generate these triggers and we can switch between these. The only downfall of this is, again, you're going to have to switch to the camera. Um, and I find that you don't really want to be doing that, which is why we go for the advanced setup. But I mean, if you're doing pre-recorded um, animations, um, you know, you might find it handy to be able to just have the um, camera shots uh, set up on a trigger. So, um, so now if you want to use this through OBS and upload it onto and stream it onto something like Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, um, all you've really, it's a pretty simple setup. You just go into settings. So you bring your settings and you want to go to stream. There you can either select the streaming service and you'll have your options here. So something like Facebook, um, you can then go to Facebook, uh, go to your uh, live stream options there and it will give you a stream key and you just add that and apply. Um, or you've got your custom streaming server where you can um, again, you can just add in the URL and stream key for that. And then it's case press and apply and start, start streaming. So it isn't uh, too hard to get that all set up. So next of all, I am going to go on to the advanced, more advanced setup where we can actually have a bit more control over the movement of the character, um, the videos, um, and adding different things in. So we will uh, get to doing that now. <laughs> 